Welcome to the Opus Projector Tool training. In this video, I want to show you our project search and the undo redo feature. So first of all, the search feature, when you open the new projector 2021, you will not see much from it yet, but there are a few ways to use the feature. The first that you probably know from a lot of other programs is the classic Control F. So if I press Control and F, Oh, nothing happens. Ah, it, I wasn't, it didn't have focus. Okay, let's try that again. Control F, then a new tab will open on the left uh, side, right next to the project tab called project search. And here we have our search. And before we go into it, um, let me close it again. And I have prepared a welcome project that I created as a sample for the Opus A3. And I don't know if you have used the welcome project in any way, but it uses almost all features that we have on our devices. And the sample project is kind of a universal project. So it's one project that will be converted to all the device types. So there are things like Ethernet camera, audio, video, multimedia player that don't work on the A3. And you can already see that the corresponding pages are marked in, in orange and automatically the search popped up and um, it already proves its uh, usefulness by showing all warnings. So when you open a project that has some warnings, just click on the project search tab that will be opened and you can go through all these warnings and see if you need to do something because it might not be uh, a multimedia player that, of course, cannot be used in the A3. It might be that a script was removed somehow or renamed or that a variable reference isn't correct anymore. And with this, on one glance, you can see things that are wrong because I think I have said that in a, in a previous video, these warnings are in general real warnings. They are not, you know, warnings that you can ignore because they are not errors something is missing something is wrong and with the welcome project of course it's okay because the a3 doesn't have an ethernet camera and of course the a3 cannot play back uh, video files so i will never create a project for the a3 a productive project that goes into the field where i put a media player in fact i couldn't because when I create project for the a3 the media player will not be available but when you open a project of yours chances are that something is, is wrong it's in, in, in some position and don't just ignore it because one way or another it will be a problem at some point okay so that's another way to to open the search so what can the search do the search searches everywhere if we open this settings field you can see where it looks it looks in pages it looks in alarms in virtual keyboards in the communication so in all the mappings and it searches in javascript and of course it also searches in project related fields and project properties these are always searched so if you have multiple projects open you can choose the one that you want to search in here but it also selects that. So if I if I am in Welcome Project 26, this will be selected here when I go here. Let's do the obvious trivial search and look for test. And very nice, we have a lot of findings. It shows you how many matches you have in how many objects, how long the search took, and how many objects were scanned. You can go through all the search results by using these two buttons. You can also use F3 and F5 for that. And what that will do, if it is on pages or alarms or JavaScript, it will open the corresponding page or file and it will mark the object where the search result was found. So here we have a numeric field named simulation test. And the next one is a string field where there's two times uh, the word test. And you can see that it found two results. First one here, second one here. So it goes really through everything. What do we have next? Text can be multilingual. Okay, so it's a multilingual string field and in Spanish, no, ah, in Italian, il testo. Sorry to all Italians, 
I probably was able to mispronounce that. So as you can see, it really goes through everything. Here you see that you have the full tree view as you know it from the project tree. If you want to switch that to a simpler view, you can click this button and it will only list the objects and the places where it found the search result. This is now the expanded view. I think that makes more sense with this view. Expanded and collapsed. This works for this view as well. So here now you have only the objects and the files and now you have the results as well. This is a very simple text search that basically just scans the whole project file and looks for the string test and whenever it finds it, it shows us. But of course we can go a little bit deeper for example, let's say we only want to find objects where the preview value contains the word test. So now we have to use some syntax here. Preview value is test. Let's see if that works. Yep, works well. So now uh, we have only uh, 14 matches in 13, whereas before, another nice feature, we have a list of all the previous searches. We've had 78 and 37 objects and here 14 matches in 13 objects. So you see that works. This checkbox might be interesting if you are not sure how the property is pronounced. So this must be very exact. I think even if I do this, it doesn't find anything. But if I uncheck this, then it will find them again. So if this is not checked, you can just type parts of properties. So let's say, I mean, it doesn't really make sense to search for values of the location, but if you just type location and you don't have this checked, it will go through X location and Y location. These options, whole word means that it will probably not find anything now. Let me, let me see. No, it does. Yeah. It only uses, it only searches for test must be a whole word. So let me do the full search again. And yeah, now the, the il testo is gone because il testo, test is not a whole word. Match case explains itself. So if I use it like this, this will be found, but this and this and this and this and this will not. So now we have only the results where test is in all lower cases. Regular expressions is a topic where I won't go into it because I'm really not able to write it fluently and I don't want to fool you by pasting something that I don't really understand. So anyone who watches this who, who says, oh, regular expressions, nice, I will surely use that. Congratulations. And I don't know how you do it. It's very powerful, but it's very cryptic. So if you're interested, check out some, some tutorials. This I had already opened to show you where the search is looking. What is very interesting is this checkbox here. If you check this, all the others will be unchecked. And now we are only searching here and here. Let me open one of the scripts so we get a, a nicer result. So now it will only search in these two pages and in this file. So if we look, we have again these results here and the Italian uh, Il Testo, and we have the results from the script, but nothing else. So if you want to look for something and you don't know exactly where it is, but you know that it's in one of these 10 pages or something, just open them and confine the search to these components. If you don't want to look in scripts, uncheck this. If you only want to look in scripts, yeah, okay, this doesn't make sense, of course. So yeah, still one result because what did I say? It always checks in the project properties. And there's a default entry for the log file header for variable logging, which is called log file header test. So still one result, even though it says we should at least check one checkbox. So if we only search in scripts, then we only get results from JavaScripts. So a really, really very powerful and great feature. And now to the second really, really great and powerful feature, the long ask for undo redo. This is the default window layout of the projector, but I'm going to change that and I'm suggesting you do the same, except if you are actually using the satellite window here or the navigator. Personally, I never do, so I will close them and I will drag and drop the undo redo tab 
that is on the upper right here by default. I will drag and drop that like this. And this will be my new default view for now. And maybe please give some feedback if you are using the navigator or the satellite view. Maybe we will change this to the default view in a future version. So undo redo, the name suggests it, uh, it's undo and redo. So if you make some changes that you didn't really want to do in your project, you can undo them. Already one, one interesting part here, you see here, it says two objects move. So to avoid a huge list of, of undo redo for changes that contain very many small changes, for example, the creation of a virtual keyboard or bulk changing. Oh, I will have to go back to the project search because I forgot one very important thing because you might ask yourself, okay, what was the syntax again to search for in specific properties and things like that? Please click on the three dot button. There are some great examples for searches that you will be able to copy and paste, and you can even keep it open. No, none. Oh, yeah. And scripts doesn't make sense, of course. There we go. Some really cool search examples for properties, searching for events, an overview of how operators can be looked for, how search commands can be connected, because this is one use case that was asked for a couple of times. How can I change the font for many objects? It goes like this. Now we have searched for all string fields, type ID 8, and numeric fields, type ID 9, and we connected that with font déjà vu sans. And what we can do now, we right click here and say, select all font property results, or if you want to do it only for day and night, we can use one of these. And now on the right in the property view, we can change to a different font. I hope that won't take too long. So at long last, it took a little bit longer than I thought, but as you can see, it works. You can even see in the search result because it still looked for déjà vu sans, and now uh, it shows that it was changed to the Xolonium font. And you can see, and this goes for our pages, you see that they are all blue because they all use the, the déjà vu fonts. And now they don't. Now they all use uh, the Xolonium. The search is not only good for finding things, for finding lost things, it is also very, very good for changing things. It was a very big help to have this when I added the day-night mode to the new dashboard trade show example, sample project. Please check it out. It's great because the project was created without day-night in mind. So I had to activate day-night and I had to make certain changes to all the objects for the two modes. And with the search, it was really very easy to do that. Okay, let's go back to undo redo. I will not undo this change here because it took a long time to do this. So what I will do is I will clear the history and now it's gone. It can't be undone anymore. So let's do some of these trivial changes. You can see however small the change is, even if it's just one pixel, it will be captured by the undo redo and it will be listed here. You can go through all the entries one by one and you can redo them one by one. You can of course click and do things like that. And let's say, yeah, this, the, the whole moving around that was, that was of course not a good idea. But entering that number, that was great. You right click on, on an entry that you want to keep and you say, ignore undo, uh, undo edit. And now I can undo everything, but the number is still there. The tooltip shows you some details, what changes have been made, and it should really cover everything. So we have gone through everything. So ideally any change that you make in your project anywhere will be tracked. One thing I have to add, let me open a JavaScript. I write some code, I write some code. I write some code, no change yet. 
sadly, we are not able to track this entry here because it doesn't exist yet in the file. If I save the, the JavaScript file, then I have it tracked. So if I go back, it's gone. And if I go back, back, it's there again. Let me save the project now to show you some other thing because the save button has become uh, semi-smart. As you can see, it's grayed out because right now there's no need, no reason to save the project because I just saved it. Because the undo redo tab tracks all changes, it also knows when it makes sense uh, to enable the save button. So I make one little change, it is tracked and the save button is enabled. I undo the change, save button is disabled again. It might be that you find some change in the project that we have forgotten to track. Hopefully not, but it might be. Please let us know. It might be that you have made some changes, they are not tracked, but you still want to save the project. Use the save all. Save all is, not, is never disabled. Um, the under redo is per project, of course. So here I haven't done anything, so the list is empty. I go back here and I have my entries. The list is currently limited to 1000 entries. Last important point, I have all these changes. Project is safe, so I can close it. And when I reopen it, the undo redo list will be empty. So project closed means undo redo is gone. If you have any feedback, if you have any ideas, improvements, anything, please give us a feedback through this. Otherwise, have fun using these features and I see you in the next video.